Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, We're coming at you on July 2nd, uh, middle of a lot of crazy COVID news still and uh, you know, occasional riots still popping up here and there. Uh, but recently, we've also had some news from the Supreme Court. But before we get into that, uh, I want to introduce you to our panelists. Up in the left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwhite, last word in liberty. And up in the right-hand corner, uh, we have Tim Everett, our screaming eagle of freedom. Uh, he's a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. Uh, we have a scroll also going down across the bottom of the screen with an email address. Uh, if you have any comments during the show that you want to send in or uh, that you want us to address, uh, send them there. And <clears throat> we might even uh, address them in a bonus section if there's enough stuff to go through. And also, if you have any personal stories of how your business or job has been impacted by either COVID or the riots, we'd love to hear about it. And maybe we can talk about it on a show in the future. Uh, so please send it there. Uh, so now getting into the news, uh, Supreme Court, uh, they've been uh, pretty active recently. Uh, it's a surprising lurch to the left in a few recent decisions. Uh, we're going to talk about at least three of those decisions today. Uh, to start off, we're going to uh, talk about the uh, recent decision on trans discrimination in the workplace, uh, uh, you know, uh, on hiring practices against uh, transsexuals. They've decided that that essentially has the same protection as uh, sex discrimination, uh, racial discrimination. They've added that into all these cases, uh, and they've done it based upon an interpretation that prior language that didn't mention gender but specifically mentioned sex uh, includes that so that there's no uh, discrimination based on, I'm not sure if this just affects transsexuals or gay people too, there's uh, definitions are always a little bit fuzzy on some of these things, but, um, no, but anyways. Like, like both, both gays and transgenders. Okay, yeah. So, uh, but anyways, uh, it's surprising, to, one of three surprising decisions in which Roberts has come down of uh, siding with the left justices on all these uh, sort of more the left-wing justices. So anyways, uh, if, if you guys wanted to get into that, you guys have any thoughts on uh, this recent decision? The whole issue here is that I see the gay, the whole issue of, of, of people being gay and people being transgender as two different issues, okay? A gay person to me have physiological responses, you know, to somebody of the same sex, the same physiological response that I would have to somebody of the opposite sex, okay? So whatever it is that caused that, I am not sure, but that to me is a physiological response. However, this transgender thing is slightly different, not slightly different, is monumentally different, okay? Transgenderism is a sickness. I'm sorry to say it. I know it's not politically correct. It's a sickness, all right? Because if I get up tomorrow morning and I say to you, I am a six foot five Chinese woman, let's suppose I said that. Immediately, you guys could look at me and tell me, Hey, hey, Leon, hold on, hold on, bro, hold on, okay? You're not six foot five. I mean, Jason, you would know that. Tim, you would not. You would know I'm not six foot five. You could look at me and know I'm not Chinese. Would you be wearing heels? (laughs) 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 I mean, some of these may affect our analysis. (laughs) What about you shaved? Yeah, right. What about the third characteristic? Being a woman. Well, you could look at that objectively too. Every cell in my body will still have the Y chromosome. That makes me male. I cannot be claiming to be woman. Okay? So, listen, I am very sympathetic to transgender people. Okay? But I cannot accept that I should now say, yesterday you are a man and today you are a woman. I cannot accept that. Now, this ruling by the Supreme Court is going to have far-reaching consequences. Because look at what is happening in women's sports right now. We have male coming into the women's sports, biological male coming into women's sports and taking part as uh, taking part in these sports as women. But everybody knows biological male are stronger, faster, taller. So what do you think is going to happen? I know there's a court case about that one going on right now. I don't know its resolution. But the consequence of this ruling is going to push things over the edge, way over the edge far more unintended than the court than the court cases because first you get one little inch 
and then it's going to stretch into a mile. So we got some problems coming up here with this whole transgender issue. And people are not, everybody wants to be politically correct and say, oh, we are being so brave. We are not recognizing our people. Yes, I want everybody to be recognized, but use science to do it. Not, 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 not this junk nonsense. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Well, Go ahead. I, you know, I, I was said, uh, uh, Tim, if you don't have anything immediately, I, I wanted to respond to at least no. a couple of things. Okay, so uh, no. one of the things I, I wanted to, I mean, I, I certainly think there's a uh, point there on, on uh, uh, giving, uh, giving a little bit and seeing where the slippery slope leads. Because, you know, when you do look at women's sports, essentially you're, you're telling biological women that, you know, there's really no uh, future in sports for you. I mean, there's a, clearly a difference between men's and women's sports already. But then to sit there and say that um, a person who was born with, uh, you know, testosterone, higher testosterone levels and all the benefits of that, uh, and then suddenly they decide to change at 16 or 18 or whenever it is that they decide to change, they have uh, a, a physical advantage. It's just that simple. I mean, they're, uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, you know, I, even if you just look at, at basic women versus men in sports, you know, I, I heard a statistic recently that, you know, the fastest uh, women in the world can be beaten by male, you know, high school runners, you know, yes. uh, there's, there's, you know, that some of the fastest male high school runners, and those aren't even, you know, near the fastest, you know, uh, males in the world. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it really is not an equal playing field. And if you allow for this slippery slope, you're disenfranchising women of, of certain rights that the same title nine is trying to protect them from so exactly so, exactly. so there's, there, there's certainly a problem there but you know I, there, there's a couple other libertarian issues i have more on the jobs front that uh, was you know one i i think from a libertarian perspective i think we prefer or at least most libertarians would prefer that government just stay out of uh, employers decision altogether uh, you know, I mean, and let the market handle discrimination. Um, and, you know, we've seen things like Jackie Robinson and others where sure. certainly, you know, the private industry led and government followed in these cases. In fact, you know, in Jackie Robinson's story, yes. Uh, yes. you know, that preceded the, the civil rights laws by over 20 something years. I mean, that's around 1940s. Uh, where they let Jackie Robinson into pro baseball and then suddenly, uh, well, not suddenly, very late, you know, very far down the road in 1964 or five is when the uh, federal government came along with its laws to uh, bar this type of discrimination and blacks were already right. overrepresented in baseball. So, uh, you know, just by private oh. competition. So I think there's a case for libertarians to be made that we shouldn't even be trying to mess around with employee and employer decisions and just let market competition. But there's even yet another issue and that's interpretation of the constitution and, and, and laws after the fact, when they sit there and they make this title nine and they say sex, and then later on, somebody comes along and interprets sex to mean something different than it is. Uh, you know, we have this happening in all kinds of other areas as well, where, you know, should uh, the, the documents be a living document that can just be uh, interpreted at will, or does living document mean that you literally have to go in and make an amendment to it if you want to change a definition? And I much prefer changing the definition instead of just having justices decide that, well, we, we just have different values today, and so we're just going to redefine the words. So I don't know if either of you guys have well, to well, see, there's one There's one issue here, though, Jason. There's one issue here, okay? Yeah. The fact of the matter is that thing that we call a constitution is a contract between the governed and the government. Okay, yeah. that's what it is, okay? And we cannot change, we cannot change the, uh, the, the terms of that contract without going through the process by which it could be amended. Anthony Scalia, who is now dead, God rest his soul, believed in original intent. If, the, if words were written with an original intent, those are the words, that's how it should be interpreted in, in whatever age. If we don't like it, if we don't like it, let's go, let's go amend it as, as provided for in that very document that we call the Constitution. Yeah, so I don't believe I in this living, that. breathing thing. I don't believe in this living, breathing stuff. I really don't. I, I, because that means anybody, any judge could sit down and say, well, you know, I don't really like the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment yeah. just don't make sense in 2020. So we should get rid of that. No, yeah. no. Yeah, I agree with Leon about, uh, about the strict definition uh, of it. Um, 
uh, and following the the meaning of words when it was written, not today. It would, you know, because I mean, because a lot of things change. You know, uh, the definitions change, and uh, so uh, words fall out of favor, and and then become well, and, and, almost uh, meaningless. A perfect example of that is the re current redefining of the word racism in all the strife we're having right now, where racism is literally being redefined in certain places to say that if if you you have to have power to be racist, it's not just your way of thinking. And and not only that, in some places, I mean, I think they're literally just saying that if you're you're not white, you can't be racist. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, certainly we'd hate to see things like that just change over time as, uh, you know, one group decides to change the meaning of words or another. I mean, I, I am sympathetic, though, to the idea that, you know, if, if government is doing something, government should not be discriminating uh, against, you know, different people. Uh, exactly. you know, but if if it's the private sector, I, I think that's a different case that I'd, I'd much prefer uh, to see, you know, let the let people work that out themselves, because you know the the problem is if you don't, if then you know if the majority happens to be racist, like with Jim Crow laws, then then you get racist laws, and I just prefer the government stay out of that altogether. So. Exactly, and and you know you talk about the definition of racism changing. I mean nowadays now if you if if you don't support a special dispensation of rights to certain groups, you're considered a racist. Yeah. Right, like some of some of us on the right don't believe in, in in affirmative action. Oh well, you know, Leon. Well, Leon. Well, they can't call me a racist because I'm black, but they might call me an Uncle Tom because I'm black, and I'm yeah. opposed to affirmative action, which I've always been opposed to. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, speaking of uh, Supreme Court things, just so we don't run out of time, uh, let's jump on to the next one. So Trump was recently de rebuffed on DACA. So uh, Obama had made a uh, executive order back in his presidency that uh, I believe allowed for uh, uh, these dreamers, they call them, uh, you know, um, migrants who are, I, for all intents and purposes, have entered illegally. But given certain circumstances, you know, they, they were allowed to stay uh, either because, you know, maybe their parents uh, were the ones who brought them here or I'm, I'm not quite sure what all the criteria are, were. Uh, Trump was trying to, through executive order, undo that. And suddenly the Supreme Court came down and said that, uh, well, regardless of whether you could or couldn't do it, you didn't follow the proper procedure. So therefore, we're going to say that you you know, your executive order is invalid. So, and, and essentially it's giving those uh, DACA uh, uh, people more uh, more protection until at least he comes back and uh, redoes his executive order. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on that? I don't at this point, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. Well, good. well you know, um, there's a there's a major problem with this ruling, okay? And you know, I think the courts are going off off the rails on this particular ruling. Fine, I could understand why we have compassion for those people. All right, these were people who were brought here by their parents, okay? Their parents were broke, were breaking the law, and their parents brought them here as teenagers or as, as un, underage, whatever. So I could I will put them in a different category than I have normal illegal uh, illegal immigrants here in, in, in the United States. However, however, Obama did this to executive order. It did not go to the Congress. He did this to executive order. And while I'm very sympathetic to those people, to the kids who were brought here illegally by their parents, if it was done by executive order, it should be able to be undone by executive order. Now, the Supreme Court comes in and say, well, hold on a second. We're going to remand it back to, to, to DHS, uh, Homeland Security, and we have to go through the jump to all of these hoops before Trump could undo, undo it by executive order, which Obama did through executive order. Now, this is highly ridiculous, okay? I am totally sympathetic to these people, but it's ridiculous when you look at the body of the law and our constitution, which allows a president to, to sign out to, to give all these executive orders, well then fine. Why Trump cannot also lay out an executive order that undo what was done to executive order? It's ridiculous. So you think the Supreme Court is legislating from the bench? Absolutely, 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I would agree on that. Well, it's one of those things, too, where it seems like, uh, you know, there was no question about whether or not Obama had followed uh, the proper procedures. And I, you know, I, I just recall it being an order. I don't recall there being public hearings on on his order prior to it going into effect. And I think right. that's essentially what they're calling for here is that, you know, well, you needed to uh, essentially reach out to the public prior to making these to understand the impacts that this would have on people who will be affected. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, it seems like, you know, one way or another, we have to have a clear set of rules uh, of how we're going to do this stuff. And, you know, for as a libertarian, I, I, I prefer that those rules be minimized, but uh, certainly there has to be some rules or, or we'll wind up like the Chaz, I guess, <laughs> in Seattle, where, you know, the, uh, it is, it is off the, the frisk at the border. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, uh, understanding of the the DACA ruling was that it was in re reference to, for example, you're a Mexican female woman and you're pregnant and you're you're eight and a half months and you uh, skip over the border to have your child. You you go into America illegally or you overstay your visa, and you have your child in the United States. They become a citizen, and that kind of thing. Is so is is that not what they were referring to there? I, I think it's it's different? broader than that. I think if if you were a uh, you know adult and you bring in an eight year old, I mean that eight year old is, oh, is okay. minor and and he really doesn't have control over his situation. And then he's grown up yeah. here, gone through school, and this is the country and world he knows. And oh, then suddenly okay. you're being evicted. But you know this all goes to the, you know some of our crazy rules about you know, uh, immigration and trying yeah. to essentially plan all this stuff. I mean, you know, the, the simple would be to just say, look, let's, let's get rid of, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, negative incentives toward immigration, you know, where, you know, potentially people could be coming here to exploit a social safety net and then just let people come. I mean, they're only going to come if there's a job waiting for them. And if there's a job waiting for them, then it's a voluntary exchange between people. And, and in that case, you know, uh, you know, who's worse off? But, you know, when you have this massive government social safety net with all kinds of strange incentives, you know, you, you don't know if, if it's not really a voluntary thing at that point for everybody Right. Yeah. Well, Cato, Cato does a series or has done a series of podcasts on how broken the immigration system is. And they they highlight the numerous ways, uh, including the difficulty uh, and the extremely long wait period to to become a legally documented uh, American citizen. And uh, apparently the, the hoops you have to jump through are, are ridiculously um, difficult and to, and uh, it depends upon time, where they're coming from too. Yeah, well, I mean, if yeah. you're coming from a place with with oh, yeah. oh, uh, a low sure. amount of people, then you got a short line. And if you're coming from a place where it has a lot of people that want to come in, then you get a long line. You know, and it's just kind of right. Yeah, very and arbitrary. It, yeah, and if uh, Apple or well, I could uh, I could tell you guys from. Uh, uh oh, Leon, did did you phrase uh, out or? I, I was going to let him finish. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, Leon. I was done, pretty much. Oh, so I was, uh, I'll say I can tell you from personal experience, jumping through those hoops is a non-trivial matter, OK? It took me 16 years from the first day I entered the United States until I became an American citizen. It was a 16-year period, 1977 to 1993. Now, so let the conservative part of me come out here right now, OK? Jason, you just said that we should just open the borders and let them, let them come, and there will be a voluntary exchange. No, no, I'm not going to agree with that. I believe in sovereignty. I believe that every country has a right to its own sovereignty and thus define what its borders are and who should cross it and who should not cross it. Okay? I really and truly believe in that. And I don't believe people should just decide they should get up one morning in Guatemala or wherever the hell they get up one morning and just decide, well, I'm going to the United States today and they should be able to walk across our borders. I am not into that. I'm sorry. Maybe I, maybe that doesn't make me very libertarian, but I'm not into that one. Well, I, you know, I, I certainly yeah. a, agree with you that a country should have uh, a right to set criteria for you know who's coming in. Otherwise, it's not really a country at that point. But uh, on the other hand, exactly, I think, yeah. But I think exactly. the flip side is though that you know uh, uh, if if somebody wants to come here to work and somebody 
want somebody to come here to work for them. That's a, a voluntary exchange between two people. And I, I guess I would question some of the rules that prevent this uh, when, you know, I mean, essentially that's restricting the freedom of American citizens as well to engage voluntarily with people, you know, to, to be able to let somebody come here and, you know, if, if they want to work in their engineering firm or if they want to mow their lawn or whatever the case may be, you know, if, if, if it's voluntary, then I, I guess I would question why some of these restrictions are in place in the first place. And certainly I would agree with you, we need to have some restrictions. I guess I'm just, you know, questioning some of these restrictions, why they're there, you know, and, and, and maybe yeah, you have, to choose yeah. a little more carefully. Should have restrictions, but it shouldn't take 16 years to become a citizen. Either. So, yeah. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, Leon, we missed out on your company for uh, 16 years that you could have been <laughs> All because some planner didn't stop you to when be I, in line all that time. <laughs> when I first came here, I was a social democrat, so I don't know if you really missed out on my company quite <laughs> early. <laughs> so waiting in line broke you out of that <laughs> socialist mentality. <laughs> hey, real quick. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a long line curing you of socialism before you get here. Maybe there is a uh, silver lining. <laughs> well, uh, so we the host started. is losing it. The host is gone. The host is done hosting. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. Well, okay, hold on. We, we've, we've still got another uh, topic. And oh my gosh, I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, let's uh, shelve the abortion one for another time because we really want to get it on the abortion thing. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we're, we're almost down to four minutes. And I really want to have a good discussion. One of these days. One yeah. of these days. Let's yeah, jump into these. Days, yeah. Well, in St. Louis, we, we had a situation recently where some homeowners came out, Black Lives Matter protest, uh, knocked down a gate and came into a community. And, you know, uh, given the current state of affairs, uh, these I guess these homeowners felt threatened. So they came out of their house uh, in the, now what's become a, a sort of an iconic image going around the Internet of, um, you know, sort of a, uh, some middle-aged people in you know pink polo shirt and uh, <laughs> and I don't know what the gal was wearing, but you know when you know the bottom line is you know she's kind of pointing a handgun around wildly and he's got uh, was it what what kind of gun was that was that an AR-15 or something Tim or was that uh, yeah okay it was an AR. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and so and then so they're pointing guns, and that does bring up a, a you know sort of a debate right now. I mean, uh, you know, people on the left are saying, "Oh my God, they're pointing guns at peaceful protesters." Again, we hear the word peaceful, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you know, but you know, these guys are no police response either. You know, so uh, well, well, what have you got to say about? It? I know Tim, you really want to talk about this one. Well, yeah, I um, you know, I, at first glance, I was uh, my. Uh, being appalled was the uh, the gun gun handling the the muzzle discipline the tr or trigger discipline muzzle control that kind of technical stuff uh, tactical the tactical um, mistakes being made uh, you know about coming out getting close to the to the protesters and, and then of course uh, you know waving the gun around with finger on the trigger. Uh, <laughs> You know, and so you, you never know if the chamber is loaded or empty and so on, but uh, it's still uh, not a uh, not what you would normally hear recommended by a uh, self-defense firearms instructor. They, they, they don't tell you to do that. Um, so but the, that kind of stuff, uh, uh, notwithstanding, they were in fear. I, I really do they think i think they had a legitimate fear because the thing about those crowds and, and there was three four hundred people there and they they said they you know they burst through that gate and you know and came one after the other through the gate you can see in the video and uh, they um were they seemed to be angry especially probably when they saw they they had guns they were probably more angry then i don't know but the the crowd when the crowd decides to turn on you, it doesn't happen over a 20 minute period. It happens in 20 seconds and yeah. it's, it, it's yeah. violent and it's swift. And 
the next thing you know, you've got a rock or a brick headed your way and you can't duck out of the way, especially when you're out there and close to them and exposed and so on like they did. So, yes, you can critique what they, how they did what they did, but in the end, if the end is going to justify the means, then they uh, successfully kept their lives and their possessions from getting and knucklehead noise patrol. Oh, it, it's time for our knucklehead noise patrol. So uh, this is a point, uh, you know, so it, it's a great discussion we were just having, but uh, it's getting near the end of the show. And so we always like to end on something outrageous that has been said by you know, a person or a group uh, that uh, is just, you know, beyond belief. And so recently uh, we've heard from the, uh, I think it's the, Houston Housing Association of Realtors, uh, and, and I, I'm not sure that they're the only ones, there may be others, but they've recently said that they're going to stop using the term master when describing master bedrooms. So you may not be able to find a house with a master bedroom at some point. I mean, I'm sure it'll, it'll uh, you know, maybe all bedrooms will be absolutely the same. Uh, no windows to make sure they're all equal. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is something that is, you know, in the news there. Again, I, I even heard there's a problem, you know, somebody was having with chess sets because you have white side and a black side. But anyway, do you guys have any thoughts on this whole, you know, uh, redefining well, of words? And yeah, we have a master battery switch in the cockpit. Most airplanes have a master switch. It's the main switch that turns the power on usually, like to the battery. So it connects the battery to the to whatever electrical buses that exist in the plane, uh, depending on their electrical system. So we're going to have to change that. I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe call it the main switch or something. I mean, no, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's just st stupid. Again, it's it's taking words uh, like, you know, what is racist and, and what is sex? Uh, what is your sex? Uh, and it's tur it's turning them inside out and upside down. It's just total stupidity. This 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 whole issue is beyond ridiculous, if you want the honest truth, okay? Because if we're going to go down this slippery slope that every word that might have had some connection to slavery, oh my goodness gracious, then we better start really thinking about that. Because the whole Democratic Party need to get out, get out of America. Because they were <laughs> very big in slavery, and they were all involved in Jim Crow. And they're yeah. all involved in the disgraceful conduct that is going on right now in the inner cities, involving black and brown kids in public <laughs> education. So if you want to go down this slippery slope, then let's go. But let's get rid of the Democratic Party in the process, please. I, I'm a. I, I could get swept away on this slippery slope because I have a master's degree. So yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. I have no experience in owning slaves. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I guess I, I can't. I can't ever get married again because I have a bachelor's degree. Ah, <laughs> exactly. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good excuse to use. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't. No way I can't. Oh, somebody's, somebody's got to. Okay, well, you know, we're at the end of somebody's our time, but we can uh, take this yeah. into a bonus session. Uh, so let me just roll out the end of the show here. Uh, thank you for listening to Libertarian Counterpoint. And, uh, you know, you can catch us in the future on Facebook uh, to see some of our past podcasts and uh, future podcasts. And uh, um, we will look at the comment in the bonus session.